today i'm going to deal second year topic for you the name of the chapter is sound at first i will discuss the important uh, formula in this chapter then i will move to numericals okay the formula to calculate velocity of sound velocity of sound in air v is equal to n lambda where n is frequency and uh, lambda is wavelength okay here what is uh, actually sound sound is nothing but the a form of energy that are produced due to the transfer of disturbance from one place to another place this uh, transfer of disturbance uh, is uh, transmitted from one place to another place due to the molecules okay the waves sound waves are generally basically categorized into two types first one mechanical waves another one is non mechanical waves first we shall see about non mechanical waves this non mechanical waves they does not require any material medium for the propagation this non mechanical waves they can even travel through vacuum for example all electromagnetic waves all electromagnetic waves like uh, infrared waves ultraviolet rays x rays gamma rays so on all these radiations comes under the category of non electromagnetic waves which does not require any material medium for the propagation as i told you that they can even travel through vacuum the other type of waves are mechanical waves they definitely requires a material medium for the propagation they are broadly classified into two types as progressive waves and stationary waves mechanical waves progressive waves are nothing but the waves which originates by themselves in the medium the waves which originates by themselves within a medium which advances in the forward direction are called progressive waves they does not require any material medium for the generation they genera they does not require any source for their generation they originates by themselves which advances in the forward direction such waves we call them as progressive waves okay these progressive waves depending upon the vibrations of particles they are classified into two more types as longitudinal waves the other type of progressive waves are called transverse waves okay these are all very familiar points too just i'm recalling back your memory these progressive waves are of two types as longitudinal and transverse these longitudinal waves are nothing but the waves in which the particles vibrates parallel to the propagation the particles vibrates in a direction parallel to the propagation are called longitudinal waves in these waves uh, compressions and rarefactions are formed the distance between any two successive compressions or any two successive rarefactions we considered as the wavelength in longitudinal waves okay in which the particles vibrates parallel to the propagation okay the direction of uh, vibrations of particles is parallel <coughs> the other type of progressive waves are transverse waves in case of transverse waves the particles vibrates perpendicular to the propagation the particles vibrates perpendicular to the propagation this waves consists of a crest and troughs crest and troughs such that the distance between any two successive crests or any two successive troughs is taken as wavelength of transverse wave okay <coughs> in this transverse waves 
the particles vibrates perpendicular okay now come back to stationary waves see in case of these stationary waves suppose uh, this is some obstruction uh, a source is present here here is a source from the source a wave is generated in the forward direction the wave is traveling like this after try uh, striking the wall it is getting reflected back like this so this is first progressive wave this is second progressive wave what is happening here two progressive waves of same amplitude and wavelength they both are traveling through medium in opposite direction such that the resultant wave is restricted between these two points the resultant wave is restricted between these two points you can clearly see in the diagram it is not moving infinitely like longitudinal waves or transverse waves such waves we call it as stationary waves in case of these stationary waves we have nodes and antinodes we have nodes and antinodes in this is stationary wave as you can see in the diagram that nodes are the points where the displacement of the particle is minimum and antinodes are the points where the displacement of the particle is maximum such that the distance between any two successive nodes or any two successive antinodes we take it as a half of the wavelength lambda by 2 okay between two nodes or two antinodes the distance is lambda by 2 okay this is about stationary wave now the formula for fundamental frequency see frequency of transverse waves in a stretched string for this sir the formula is given by n is equal to 1 by 12 root over t by m or in some textbooks it is represented as Next book it is represented as t by nu. Okay, here t is tension in the string and nu is we call it as linear density. Linear density is nothing but mass per unit length. Linear density is nothing but mass per unit length. Okay. This is a standard formula to calculate the frequency of transverse waves. From this relation, I can uh, derive three laws of transverse waves in a string. Okay, laws of transverse waves. Laws of transverse waves. in a string there are three laws actually as you can see here to express the first law of transverse waves i am considering the relation between frequency and length by keeping the other two uh, uh, tension and <coughs> linear density are constants such that according to first law <coughs> frequency is inversely proportional to length you can see here clearly frequency inversely proportional to length when tension and uh, linear density are constants a uh, frequency is inversely proportional to length i can uh, express uh, it as uh, n into l is equal to constant r n1 l1 is equal to n2 l2 So this is the mathematical form of 
first law of transverse waves okay then <coughs> second law what is the general form n is equal to 1 by 2l under root t by nu from this only i am deducing the loss we need to remember this equation okay second law says that how frequency and tension they both are related according to this equation frequency is a directly proportional to square root of tension when a length and linear density are constants okay from the second right and proportional to or n1 sorry i can write it as n1 by n2 is equal to root over t1 by t2 this is the mathematical form of second law of transverse waves then third law for third law we need to consider the relation between frequency and linear density here okay how frequency and linear density are related here frequency is inversely proportional to square root of linear density when length tension are kept constants so from which i can write n root nu is equal to constant which implies n1 root nu1 is equal to n2 root nu2 okay this is the third law of transverse waves okay so the three laws of transverse waves so we have argon pipes argon pipes are sound producing bodies argon pipes are sound producing bodies so these argon pipes are uh, basically categorized into two types as a closed pipe and open pipe okay first we see closed pipe uh, and we shall see various harmonics harmonics are nothing but multiples of fundamental frequencies suppose if n is a frequency 2n 3n 4n so on those multiples of frequencies we call them as harmonics okay how harmonics develop in a uh, closed pipe we shall see now first uh, closed pipe nothing but an argon pipe which is closed at one end see here this is argon pipe it is closed at one end this is called a closed pipe okay now when the closed pipe is vibrating with a single loop or a single segment it looks like this this is how it looks like closed pipe vibrating with single loop these uh, waves formed in the closed pipe are open pipe all these are stationary waves only as i told you already that in stationary waves we have uh, nodes and anti nodes so according to this uh, diagram in the fundamental mode for the closed pipe here we have anti node here we have node because the displacement is minimum the displacement is maximum the displacement is minimum here okay here also we are having an anti node so what is the length of the vibrating air column in this case when the closed pipe is vibrating with single loop length of the vibrating air column is nothing but the distance between anti node and the node we know that in a stationary wave the distance between two anti nodes or two nodes is lambda by 2 so what would be the distance between anti node and the next successive node how much it is lambda by 4 okay so length of the vibrating string or length of the closed pipe which is vibrating with a single loop okay the length of the vibrating air column is lambda by 4 from this second right lambda is equal to 4l 
since v is equal to n lambda n into lambda we got it as 4l from the second right n is equal to v by 4l here this n is equal to v by 4l n is called n is called fundamental frequency okay n is called fundamental frequency let us see one more case when the uh, closure pipe is vibrating with the two segments for example this is a closed pipe you can see the closed pipe is now vibrating with the two loops or two segments so what you are going to get here anti nodes anti nodes as so the displacement is minimum this is node this is also node so what is the total length of the vibrating air column here total length of the vibrating air column is between distance between two anti nodes and between this anti node and this node we know that uh, between two anti nodes the distance is lambda by 2 between anti node and the next successive node lambda by 4 so how much it is going to become lambda 2 plus lambda by 4 it is going to become 3 lambda by 4 okay 3 lambda by 4 so length of the vibrating air column when the closure pipe is vibrating with the two segments is going to be l is equal to 3 lambda by 4 from this lambda is equal to 4l by 3 again following the same manner since v is equal to n lambda already i have taken n now so that's the reason why i am taking this one as n1 so n1 into lambda that is n1 into lambda we got it as 4l by 3 from this so if you cross multiply n1 is equal to i am getting 3v by 4l can also be written as 3 times v by 4l but what is v by 4l v by 4l is nothing but n no n is a fundamental frequency so n1 is equal to 3 times the fundamental frequency that means uh, it can be concluded that when this uh, closed pipe is vibrating with the uh, two loops then the frequency of the vibrating uh, air column in the closed pipe is 3 times of the fundamental frequency okay now let us see uh, one more case let us see one more case in which uh, in which it is vibrating with the uh, three three loops see here this is a closed pipe it is vibrating with the three segments now see node no 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 this is anti nodes we are getting three anti nodes with the three nodes okay when this closure pipe is now vibrating with the three loops so uh, the total uh, length of the vibrating string is nothing but uh this is lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2 plus lambda by 4 so how much it is going to become l is equal to 5 lambda by 4 i am getting right okay so length of the vibrating air column is 5 lambda by 4 from that lambda is equal to 4l by 5 okay again Uh, v is equal to n to lambda. That is m two into four l by five. From which uh, n two times of five times v by four l. So n two value is how much I am getting? Five n. Okay, when it uh, or closure pipe vibrating with a single segment v by four l. With two segments, 3v by 4l. With five segments, I'm getting 
5e by 4l. So, uh, what is the ratio of uh, harmonics? Or uh, simply what is the ratio of the frequencies uh, in closed pipe means what I can say? N1 is to N2 is to N3. So, on is 1 is to 3 is to 5 is to so on. Okay, that is the ratio of frequencies or harmonics you can say in a closer pipe. Okay, then the other type of uh, closer pipe, uh, organ pipe is open pipe okay as i told you already that closer pipe is nothing but an organ pipe which is closed at one end but in case of open pipe that organ pipe will be kept open at both ends see here this is called open pipe let us uh, see what is the fundamental uh, frequency in case of this open pipe here in the fundamental mode it is having two antinodes and one node. Uh, according to the diagram, what is the length of the vibrating air column? It is nothing but the distance between these two antinodes. No? We know that in case of uh, a stationary wave, the distance between the two antinodes is nothing but half of the wavelength. So, length of the closer pipe which is vibrating in the fundamental mode is going to be lambda by 2. From this lambda is equal to 2L. Since v is equal to n lambda that is n into in place of lambda I am writing 2L from which n is equal to v by 2L. This n is equal to v by 2L here n is called n is called fundamental frequency fundamental frequency of open pipe in case of a closer pipe we got the fundamental frequency as n is equal to v by 4 l in closed pipe that is whereas in open pipe uh, its value is n is equal to v by 2 l ok. Let us see one more case in uh, open pipe as you can see let this open pipe vibrating in this way. How many loops it is having now 1, 2, 3, 3 loops we are going to get uh, 3 antinodes and uh, 2 nodes. What is the total length of the vibrating air column? It is nothing but distance between these two points. So, according to the diagram, the total length of the vibrating air column is nothing but distance between these two antinodes plus distance between these two antinodes. Between these two, lambda by 2. Between these two again, lambda by 2. So, what we are going to get? Lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2, it will be 2 lambda by 2, do not cancel 2 in numerator and denominator for our simplification purpose, so let it be like that only. So, length of the vibrating air column in this case is 2 lambda by 2, again the same approach. Since V is equal to N lambda, the change I am supposing it as N1, that is N1 into in place of lambda I am writing 2 lambda by 2, then cross multiply we are going to get the value of a frequency n1 as 2 times v by 2l that is 2 times v by 2l in place of v by 2l can I write n ok. So, n1 is equal to 2n that means when the open pipe vibrating with a single loop sorry vibrating with the 3 loops then the frequency of the vibrating string is nothing but 2 times the fundamental frequency. Let us see the case with one more loop. Now, this uh, open pipe is now vibrating uh, with the uh, four loops we see now. See here, the open pipe, this, this gives the correct picture, you can see here, four antinodes, right? This is uh, three nodes, exactly. Four antinodes, three nodes. Uh, in this case, when the uh, string is vibrating with the uh, uh, how many 1, 2, 3, 4 loops we are getting 4 antinodes and 3 nodes such that 
length of the vibrating air, air column is nothing but two antinodes, two antinodes between these two antinodes. This is lambda by two, lambda by two, again lambda by two. How much are going to get? L as three lambda by two. Okay. So the length of the vibrating string is L is equal to 3 lambda by 2 from which I can get lambda is equal to 2L by 3. Okay. Since V is equal to N2 into lambda that is N2 into in place of lambda I am substituting 2L by 3. So, N2 we are getting it as 3N. That means when this uh, open pipe is vibrating with 4 loops, we are getting uh, uh, the frequency as 3 times the fundamental frequency. Okay. So, the ratio of frequencies, ratio of frequencies is nothing but 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to so on. Okay. That is the ratio of frequencies uh, in open pipe. Okay. Next. Out of these organ pipes, going to discuss about uh, the most important one in this is Doppler effect. For competitive point of view, from competitive point of view, the Doppler effect is a compulsory question for M set. Simply briefly, I will tell you, it is a very uh, elaborated phenomena. In a brief way, I will explain you about this Doppler effect. Doppler effect is nothing but the apparent change in frequency of sound due to the relative motion between the source of sound and observer. We call it as a Doppler effect. Okay. See, for example, uh, you are the so you are the observer, you are standing on the platform. The source of sound is a train, train, a train is a, a blowing horn, you are on a uh, platform, standing on a platform, the train is blowing the horn, you are at rest for suppose, the train is approaching towards you, as the time passes by, the frequency, simply the sound received by the observer will gradually increase. Why? Because the train is moving towards you. Suppose when the train is moving away from you, the sound received by you gradually decreases. Let us suppose the source, the train is at rest. You are moving towards the train. As the time passes by, the sound received by you will gradually increase. On the other hand, when you are moving away from the train, the sound received by you gradually decreases. In the first case, as I told you, source is in motion, the observer is at rest. Whereas in the second case, observer is in motion, source is at rest. Let us suppose that uh, both are in motion. That means both the source and as well as the observer. And both the source and observer are in motion. This there are two more possibilities. Both the source and observer may be moving towards each other. If both the train and observer moves towards each other, what happens to the frequency? What happens to the sound received by observer? It increases. On the other hand, when both the source and observer are moving away from each other, the sound received by the observer gradually decreases. And we see in all these situations, in all these situations, in each case, the sound received by the observer is not remaining constant. It is changing from one situation to another situation. Sometimes it is decreasing and sometimes it is increasing. 
this change in the frequency of the sound received by the observer due to the relative motion between source and observer we call it as a doppler effect why i am saying relative motion because we till now we have seen that uh, the source is moving with respect to the observer observer is moving with respect to source that means we are considering the source the motion of one with respect to other the motion of source with respect to observer or motion of observer with respect to source as we are correlating the motions of one with respect to other we call it as a relative motion so due to this relative motion in each case depending about the situation the sound received by the observer is gradually changing this phenomena of change in the frequency of the sound received by the observer due to the relative motion between the source of sound and observer we call it as a doppler effect okay see here i am giving the statement the apparent change in frequency of sound you need to pay little interest in this topic because actually this topic is related for from ip this year for the students who are applying for second year the doppler effect is in deleted portion but it is included for competitive part okay the apparent uh, uh change this is apparent change in frequency of sound due to relative motion relative motion between source of sound source of sound and observer source of sound and observer is called is called doppler effect due to relative motion between source of sound and observer is called doppler effect in this case the frequency expression for the apparent frequency is given by n dash is equal to v minus v0 by v minus vs into n n dash is equal to v minus v0 by v minus vs into n here here n dash is apparent frequency or change in frequency we call v is velocity of sound v not velocity of observer and uh, v s velocity of source so in order to calculate the apparent change in frequency of sound we use this concept of doppler effect okay here should be remember that uh, this uh, doppler effect uh, is valid only when the velocities of source and observer are much less than velocity of uh, sound in air because we know that the velocity of sound is approximately how much 335 to 340 we usually consider the value of speed of sound in air okay if the velocity of sound if the velocity of source and velocity of observer is comparatively very small when compared with the velocity of sound then only the doppler effect is applicable otherwise the doppler effect is not valid okay so this is about the concept of a doppler effect
Now, the apparent frequency in Doppler effect. Let us briefly, briefly, I'm going to discuss the various cases uh, that we come across in Doppler effect. See here, you need to remember this formula: n dash is equal to v minus v zero by v plus v s into n. Okay, that relation I'm writing once again. See here. So frequency. This is standard formula. You have to remember. V minus v zero by v minus v s into n. This equation you need to remember. This is the basis for all the cases that we learn in the Doppler effect. In this case one. Case one. And this sir. Uh, Source in motion. And observer at rest. Source in motion and the observer is at rest. In these two possibilities are there. As the observer is at rest, the source is in motion. One possibility is the source may be moving towards the observer. The other possibility is the source may be moving away from the observer. Okay. In this first sub case, source towards observer. Source moving towards observer. But suppose uh, you better uh, you follow this method. Let's take a straight line. Uh, let uh, S represents the source, and O represents the observer. V S V S is the velocity of source. V zero represents observer. Velocity of observer. One sign convention you need to follow. One second. Here V is velocity of sound in air. Velocity of sound in air is v. The most important sign convention you need to remember here is this velocity of sound. See, by convention, because I did not discuss the derivation, uh, you have to remember these things. By convention, the velocity of sound is always directed towards right side. You remember, velocity of sound is directed towards right side. Okay, now. Uh, the rule says that uh, when the source and observer moves in the direction of velocity of sound, when both source and observer moves in the direction of velocity of sound, their velocities are positive, and if they move in opposite direction, their velocities are considered as negative. When source and observer move in the direction of velocity of sound, the velocities are positive. If they move in opposite direction to velocity of sound, their velocities are Negative. You need to remember this. Okay. Now, on the basis of that, see here. In this case, the observer is at rest now, so we can consider velocity of observer to be zero. Right. See, source towards observer. So, in which direction the source is moving? Source is moving in the direction of velocity of sound. Source is moving in the direction of observer. Source is moving towards observer. A source is moving towards observer. Velocity of source is positive. Velocity of source is positive. Now, here you can see. See, here velocity of observer is zero, and the velocity of source is positive. Now these values are substituted in this equation, and see. n dash is equal to v minus velocity of observer is zero now by v minus v s into n. So what we are going to get n dash is equal to v by V minus V S into N. 
what is happening here? A denominator is decreasing here. We know that in any mathematical expression, if a denominator decreases, obviously the total value increases. So the apparent frequency increases. Okay. Therefore, n dash increases. That means the thing is that uh, the numericals, uh, if the case arises that when the source is moving towards the observer which is at rest, then we need to apply this formula. We need to apply this formula. I will explain you while discussing numericals. Okay, how to apply. In this uh, next case is second possibility source away from observer source away from observer okay if you take the diagram for each case it will be convenient for you okay you try to practice in this way this velocity of sound is told you already by mandatory it is taken towards the right side this is observer as a observer is a trust velocity of observer will be zero hmm. source this vs is velocity of so source moving away from observer means source is moving in this direction away from observer so the source is now moving in the direction opposite to the velocity of sound so the velocity of source is taken as negative velocity of source is taken as negative now you can see here here v0 is 0, v0 is 0 and, and vs is negative, right? So, uh, what I am going to get n dash is equal to v minus 0 by v minus of minus vs into n, okay? So, finally, what is going to become? n dash is equal to v by v plus v s into n. Okay. So, according to this formula, what is happening here? The denominator is increasing. In a mathematical expression, if a denominator increases, we know that the total value decreases. That means the apparent frequency of sound received by the observer decreases when the source is moving away from the observer okay then in this is second case case 2 come to case 2 source at rest and uh, observer in motion source at rest or observer motion. Again in this case, so two more possibilities are there. The first possibility is observer may be moving towards the source. The other possibility is the observer will be moving away from the source. Okay. See here, first one. Observer towards the source. Observer towards the source. Uh, see here. Velocity of sound always towards the right side. This is observer. This is source. I told you here source is at rest. So, velocity of source will be zero. What is the case? Observer towards the source. That means observer, observer moving towards the left side. Observer moving in the direction opposite to velocity of sound. So, velocity of observer is negative here. Okay. So, what I can write here? Uh, velocity of source is 0 and the velocity of observer is negative. Now, substitute these two in that uh, basic equation. Then see what you are going to get. N dash is equal to. Sorry. This one uh, 
dash is equal to v minus v zero is negative na zero by v minus the source is a trust so velocity of source is zero into n so what the equation is going to become n dash is equal to v plus v zero by v into n what is this uh, here in this case you can see that a numerator is increasing if a numerator increases uh, then we know that total value increases so the frequency of the sound received by the observer also increases okay therefore n dash increases okay and this uh, an next possibility observer observer away from the source okay observer moving away from the source in this uh, uh, consider the diagram observer the velocity of sound and this is the source source is at rest so velocity of source is zero observer is moving uh, away from the source so observer observer away from the source Our observer moving now in the direction of velocity of sound so velocity of sound uh, is positive here therefore what i can write here velocity of source is zero and velocity of observer is positive substitute these values here and dash is equal to v minus v0 by v minus 0 into n which implies and dash is equal to v minus v0 by v into n okay in this uh, as you can see clearly numerator is decreasing when numerator decreases total value also decreases so apparent frequency decreases and dash decreases okay in this last case is there case 3